Hey guys and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory we're going to be talking about convergency and departure. Now there's a fair few questions on the ATPL exam about convergency and departure. Now they're relatively simple once you understand the basic concepts. I'm not going to go into specific examples today, but as long as you understand the principle of where the equations come from, you should be able to type in any numbers into the equations and get the correct answers, so long as you understand where these are coming from. First of all, let's talk about the great circle and the run line, also called a small circle. A great circle is essentially, on my nice drawing of the world here, a line which cuts it equally into two sections. A famous one would be the equator. If we cut the Earth into two along the equator, we're going to get two equal chunks. So that's going to be a great circle line. Uh, the meridians, they are also great circle lines. We can cut a great circle line this way as well. As long as it cuts the Earth into two exact sections, that is a great circle line. And it is also the shortest distance between two points that are intersecting that cut. Uh, a run line is a straight line which cuts the meridians at the same angle. Now, this could be, for example, a parallel of latitude, because it would cut all the meridians at 90 degrees, or it could be any line. For example, I've drawn a red one here between point A and point B down here, which cuts the meridians at about 45 degrees each. Now, to go from point A to point B, you would select the heading, maintain the heading, and you'd get to point B, always using the same heading. However, between point A and point B, the great circle line would be a shorter distance. Because of the maps we use, it's represented as a curve. That's material for another lesson. Now, the shortest distance between two points always smiles towards the equator. So as you can see, between point A and point B, the blue line I've drawn there, representing the great circle, heads towards the North Pole because it's north of the equator. If it was in the south, between points B and point C, it leans towards the South Pole. So if you were going from point A to point C, the great circle, the actual shortest distance, the line drawn on a map, on a regular map, would look something like that. It would look like an S. And that would actually be the shortest distance to take. Now, convergency and the conversion angle, where do they come into play? Well, as you can see, between our run line and great circle lines, there is an angle. I've exploded the A to B view here. So we have point A and point B, as represented up here. And we have the run line in between them, which I've drawn as a straight line. Uh, and the great circle, which I've drawn as a curved line. Now, depending on the map, sometimes you could actually see them drawn the other way around. Draw uh, the great circle line as a straight line and the run line as a curved line. It just depends on the type of map you're using. Let's first of all talk about the conversion angle, which is easier to understand, slightly easier to understand. Now, the conversion angle is the angular difference between the run line and the great circle line. So if we were at point A and we knew to go to point B, we had to uh, fly heading 235, for example, we would know that the great circle line is different. We would have to fly an initial different heading. And in fact, our heading would be constantly changing. So initially, we might have to fly 250, but we would ending up flying 180, maybe. As you can see, our heading there would be constantly changing towards B. The initial angular difference is what we call the conversion angle. And convergency is the angular difference between point A and point B. So it's the total difference between the initial track that you fly and the last track that you fly getting towards your destination. So as you can see, I've visualized that there. If you can see our initial heading over here, represented by that line, and our final heading dashed down there, you can see there it's actually double what the conversion angle is. So the formulas. Now, to understand the formulas, they're relatively simple, as long as you understand the drawings and where they're coming from. So convergency is the change in longitude times the sine of the mean latitude. So let's break that down. Change in longitude between point A and point B. If we take the meridians and we know the difference, say A is at um, 30 east and B is in the Greenwich meridian, which would be zero, then the change in longitude would be 30 degrees. Now, sine of the mean latitude. So to calculate the mean latitude, we just need to add both latitudes and divide by two an average of the latitude, essentially. So if point B was at the equator, say, the latitude would be zero, and let's say point A was at 50 degrees north, well, the average latitude would be 50 plus zero divided by two, 25. 30 times sine 25. But the example doesn't matter, as long as you understand the concepts and where it all comes from. And to work out the conversion angle, which is the difference between the initial heading of the great circle and the run line, it's just half of the convergency. So you work out the convergency, as we've just described, and divided by two. Feel free to pause the video, go back, listen to the description again until you understand it. Hopefully this little diagram makes sense to you. 
So that's our little conversion angle, and that is convergency. It's the total angular difference between point A and point B. Now, what is departure? Departure is the distance along a parallel of latitude. It's very important, because departure, we're trying to work out a distance in nautical miles, it's very important that the change in longitude goes in minutes, because one minute is equal to one nautical mile, so that way the equations match up mathematically. On the equator, or any great circle line, we know that one mile is equal to one minute. We know that the Earth has 360 degrees, one degree is 60 minutes, each minute is one nautical mile. If you did 360 times 60, you would get the circumference of the Earth. If you have a more complicated latitude and longitude position involving degrees, minutes and seconds, I like to convert it all into minutes. At the equator, we know one nautical mile is one minute. However, let's take a distance between two meridians. Let's say between the Greenwich meridian zero and 20 degrees east over here. So we know 20 degrees is going to equal 20 times 60 and that will give us the nautical miles. However, as we go north or south, that distance, even though it's the same change in longitude because it's still 20 degrees difference between my little example points here, as we go north you can see the, the points get closer and closer and closer until they actually meet at the North Pole, the same as we go south. So the departure is actually getting shorter, it's a shorter distance for the same amount of degrees. What does it vary with? It varies with the cosine of the latitude, whether it be north or south. So if we put a little example here, let's say our point A there was at 50 degrees north and we wanted to fly from point A to point Y, which would just be following that parallel that we're at there at 50 degrees north eastbound, then all we would have to do is know the longitude change between A and Y. Let's say the change between A and Y was one degree, so that would be 60 minutes. So we know the change in longitude is 60 times the cosine of 50, and that will give us a departure in nautical miles. Very important to change the longitude into minutes so that you get nautical miles at the other end. So I hope that's cleared up any doubts you might have had about convergency and departure. Best advice is to practice with examples. As long as you understand the basics, then you can input any numbers. One last thing I've mentioned, which I've seen in a couple of ATPL questions, is this distance here. Now this distance is the midpoint between A and B, and you can work out how far away, distance-wise, you will be from your run line if you take the great circle line. How? Because that angle there will be 90 degrees. Because you have that angle there, you can use trigonometry to work out that distance there. If you need a trigonometry lesson, I'll do one for you. Let's talk a little bit about how to change from degrees to minutes to seconds, just to clarify things up a little. So, with a bit of magic, bang! One degree we know is 60 minutes, and one minute we know is 60 seconds. So to work out a more complicated point on the Earth, whether it's latitude or longitude, in degrees or minutes, we would do the following. I have an example here, 5 degrees, 20 minutes and 45 seconds. Doesn't matter if it's north, east, west or south. So if we want to work out 5 degrees, 20 minutes and 45 seconds in degrees, this would be for any calculations to do with convergency. First we have to pass 45 seconds into minutes and then the minutes into the degrees. So 45 divided by 60 is 0.75, so it's going to be 20.75 minutes and then we will pass 20.75 divided by 60 again is going to equal 0 0.345 degrees. So we add that onto the degrees we already have, 5.345. I forgot to add the 60 in there, 20.75 divided by 60. Now if we wanted to work it out in minutes, this would be for departure, we would have to first calculate the amount of degrees in minutes. So 5 times 60 equals 300, and add that onto the 20 we have already, 320, and we already know that 45 seconds is 0.75 of a minute, Add that onto there and now we have that in minutes. Good for our departure calculations. Bonus questions here. So 360 degrees, i.e. full circle, times 60 nautical miles, because we have 60 nautical miles in one degree, equals the circumference of the Earth. So if you're ever in any doubt as to what the circumference of the Earth is, 360 times 60 will give it to you in nautical miles at least. Then multiply by 1.852 if you want to get it in kilometers. We'll magically go back. Thanks for the video suggestions. If you'd like to see more videos, please like, share and subscribe. All the best, until next time.